Hey, this is Russ Payton with Real Plain Public Radio. This is RPPR episode 183, Delta Green, Impossible Landscapes, and Dead Channels. Uh, with me with this episode, we have two special guests. Uh, of course, one is a regular here on the podcast, Caleb. How are you doing, hey. Caleb? And, uh, but also, uh, special guest, uh, Dennis Netwiller of Arc Dream. Uh, <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> We're all doing very good. Uh, so... <laughs> You know, because uh, we get to hear more about Delta Green. And oh. um, the big news, of course, is obviously Impossible Landscapes. After uh, oh. three, over three long years, uh, it is finally out in PDF form. It is currently, as we are recording this, underway to be printed in physical form. Um, yes. <laughs> it's in China and, as we speak. Yes. And uh, uh, so hopefully... This year, this calendar year, uh, you can hold that slight 370 page volume in your hands. That it'll be I, here in May, yes. Yeah. Uh, and it'll wind its way through the mailing system, uh, to the best of its God ability. <laughs> and, God bless whatever <laughs> yeah. U.S. postal borough carries your copy to you. May its hooves be swift. <laughs> <laughs> to outrun the mini bandits yeah um yeah um so yeah we 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 were we're, we're gonna dive into night floors and all the other uh uh fun parts of uh uh impossible landscapes um but uh first we should probably talk about uh what it, you know i mentioned dead channels what is dead channels um so uh caleb do you want do you want to explain dead channels um uh i am so nihilistic i am looking to delta green as a <laughs> ray of hope to get out of uh the nightmare servitude uh to the u.s government so nice. i'm gonna become an absurd hero um that just tells spooky stories on the internet mm-hmm. and somehow gets enough money to live that's the experiment <laughs> we're gonna try it out baby mm-hmm. Uh, I hope you're all in for the ride. So I've been told that I do okay Delta Green actual <laughs> plays in the past. Yeah. Um, so hopefully people will pay for that. Uh, we're going to keep it pretty simple. I will record something. Um, it could be like micro fiction about a weird Yithian dream I had, mm-hmm. or it could be um, an actual play with my friends. Uh, and then if you would like it, you could pay me a dollar or more. And that's it. That's that's all the levels. We're done. (laughs) Exactly one level. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a thing. And if you would like it, you 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 don't. You get the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So that's dead channels. (laughs) I'm I'm going to tell spooky stories Mm -hmm. and hope that people give me food. So, (laughs) well, money that you can exchange for food. There's some sort of village like Mm -hmm. caricature. Mm-hmm. of a person yeah just great it's, oh this that's the... just spooky caleb mm-hmm. he tells you a spooky story and you give him a coin if you don't he will die uh we've all just sort of taken responsibility for him so yeah. coming uh, to an internet near you this is the best possible announcement i'm, I'm proud of you caleb uh, uh do you have a, an approximate date of when you're going to be launching dead channels uh, I will be launching Dead Channels in May of 2021. Okay, uh, so the same a bunch of that... other Heaven on Games projects. Mm-hmm. As I am on that grind to mm-hmm. get that bag, as the kids <laughs> would say, rise yeah. and grind. You mm-hmm. know that mm-hmm. daily hustle. Um, so, um, and also uh, speaking of Caleb Delta Green projects, uh, what is what is what is our latest update on God's Teeth? Uh, uh, I've so. I've finished it. I won't allow them to have the manuscript. It's beautiful and perfect. <laughs> they no, no, tra- no. That's not that's not true. Yeah, I am having my way with Caleb's manuscript as we speak, uh, and it's it's a wonderful, um, subtle, uh, beauteous, sinuous thing, which I'm doing my best to ruin and make square and fit into the delta green no i'm just kidding it's 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 wonderful i love it um i'm editing the shit out of it and then it'll go to shane who will then edit the shit out of it and then it'll go back to caleb and he'll go what is this mm-hmm. 
why is it called you know fresh savory pillows why is um that's way more terrifying as a title. i know i know especially if it you see all the delta green, green books and like, then the one titled fresh savory pillows <laughs> that like, one's the nightmare I'm buy, fuel I'm gonna like, buy yeah that one. yeah um i thought and, that got uh, sued by that uh the, the, uh, the polling the guy yeah yeah <laughs> that's okay he he was uh yeah he's now part of a voting machine company they, they oh, own okay it's yeah. fine That's um yeah so uh no i'm editing it uh, as we speak about uh three quarters of the way through the manuscript mm -hmm. and it's chunking along and it feels good um and shane has kind of looked over the first section and really liked it mm -hmm. uh, and i sent some back to mr stokes and he gave me a i think a thumbs up i couldn't tell yeah because i think i think he was terribly depressed at the time <laughs> It was more of a neutral. You're gonna have thumb. to narrow that down, man. <laughs> it was kind it's of like, like a lot a, of times. It was yeah. like a this, <laughs> and I went, "I'm gonna take it." That's yeah. that's a that's a positive. Yeah. Um. So that's cool. where we're at. Um. Do you have a, uh, any idea what what approximately how big the final book's gonna be at this point? Uh, it's it's tough to say. It's gonna be shorter than the manuscript turned in. Obviously, no. um, a, a chunk of it's kind of either gonna be moved to the back or um i was 20k slam. over okay for me for that's pretty me, good that yeah. is a super model thin manuscript oh yeah no, no. no. Yeah. so so me and shane joke about this a lot we it's very whenever we bring someone in to write delta green like ken or greg or um they either miss the kind of the core content hook mm -hmm. or they miss the total it's never both usually. It's usually like my Delta Green's about jetpacks. Yay! <laughs> and we're like, fuck no, delete. Uh, or it's like my manuscript is three hundred thousand pages. No. So <laughs> Caleb, you fell into the second camp, which is good. Uh, because we could just trim that down and then we don't have to worry about it. So but hey, none of I the gave Greg numbers. once that was three times the word count. He asked for like oh, fifteen Jesus and I gave him like sixty five. So Jesus Christ. Yeah, you guys got off easy. I don't yeah, I don't know yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. complaining about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um anyway, yeah. So so it's 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 a good manuscript. It's really solid. And the good news is once the edit once the two edits are done, the raw text will go out to the Kickstarter mm -hmm. people to just kind of do what they will with it. And hopefully like impossible landscapes, one of the most useful things we got was I ran it about eight times impossible landscapes. And mm -hmm. we have like 23 people writing in here's my campaign. And we, we you know, even insane detailed. And then he went to, you know, mm -hmm. Denmark mm -hmm. and did this. It's like, Holy fuck. <laughs> um, and it really helped me go back in the rewrite to kind of add in detail and expand stuff. So we hope to get the same kind of kickback from God's teeth once it gets out into the wild. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. I, uh, I I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, that that first generation of uh, God's teeth campaigns. Yeah, uh, yeah, we love it. Um, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. <laughs> Uh, the main thing is figuring out a way to have uh, a single Delta Green campaign that's actually both books, Impossible Landscapes and God's Teeth. No, um, you could do that. Yeah. God, your Reese's Pieces madness has to end. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you're just going to yeah. work masks in there, too. And I was going to yeah. say, it's going to be the equivalent of masks, putting those two campaigns together <laughs> like that. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, if you play Riffs as an impressionable age, it just ruins you as a person. <laughs> That's what I've learned <laughs> wow. in my years of podcasting. Feeling so attacked. <laughs> Not uh, talking about anyone in particular, but wow, wow, yeah, hostility. Apparently, <laughs> um, at least World of Darkness wasn't my first RPG. Um, oh, thank oh. Christ! For that. Yeah. <laughs> we are grateful for that every day. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so. Um, yeah, so speaking of Impossible Landscapes, uh, it's finally here. I've started reading through it. I do plan to run it for RPPBR. Oh, cool. um, uh, that is going to be the next big campaign, but uh, I'm taking my time fully reading it and trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, sure. So, um, but this idea, and and of course, I'm very, I, I knew I had to do this because um, I've been just fascinated with your, on the, the Haster slash Carcosa mythos, uh, since Delta Green Countdown, all, all, yeah. all the way back in the day, which is where I read Night Floors. And uh, I know for me, 
when I saw that there was a version of horror in a tabletop role playing game that wasn't um, kill the monster or you are the monster, you know, that's like yeah. the, the traditional Call of Cthulhu thing is kill the monster or banish the monster or whatever. Uh, and in the other, the other horror game is obviously vampire where you are the monster and why are mm. you doing these awful things? Um, and this, this, and it wasn't relying on slasher film tropes or uh, as, as much as, you know, what you, what you've dubbed a surreal horror. So yes. um, the, I guess that, that sort of, for the listeners who aren't as familiar with it, you know, haven't been reading this for you know the last 20 years. Um, what, what is the Genesis, the seeds of uh, the surreal horror, uh, as you call it? Of- um, so high level, uh, John Tynes wrote this fantastic article called the road to Holly in mm-hmm. unspeakable oath. Number one, which is the zine we worked on way, way back when. Mm-hmm. And he wrote this, this great examination of, of, the King in Yellow. And The King in Yellow is a book from 1895 uh, written by Robert Chambers, uh, who was a preeminent author and illustrator. Uh, he was probably the world's leading romance writer at the time, which is bizarre. Uh, uh, you know, he, he painted the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. Mm-hmm. Um, brilliant dude. But um, what's brilliant about the King Yellow is it's a weird alternate history slash romance slash science fiction slash surreal horror and surreal horror uh, for me is just um, unexpected uh, yet deeply personal horror, something that kind of crawls up in you and makes you jump because you, you know it and you somehow always knew it. Um, examples might include um, the shining is, is mm. probably the most popular example of, you don't know whether this is going on in the character's head Mm -hmm. or if there are ghosts or if it's a little bit of both. Um, And when you see and feel and and experience these, these things, these monsters, these ghosts, they know you, they know your inner secrets. They know things about you. You might not even want to admit to yourself. And that's really what I wanted to bring through into this stuff. And it all, it was all birthed from this one little article I read in a tiny little zine in New Jersey when I was, 20 i guess um yeah and the road to holly uh that's um i've read it uh that that issue that that essay at least i be, uh, i believe is available online somewhere i mean i'll put it yeah yeah i believe so if no. you have delta green countdown you mm-hmm. have it, it yeah. it's basically that entire chapter mm-hmm. repurposed so uh so i wrote um john was writing something for countdown about the king yellow and i said you know what uh i'm gonna run a scenario for the pagan group uh, based on the King Yellow stuff. And I ran Night Floors. Mm-hmm. Night Floors is vaguely based on people I know, places I've been, uh, a building I know very specifically that is laid out like that mm-hmm. and what put up artists at a cheap rate for some charity. Um, so uh, I ran it and it really upset everybody at the table. So I knew I was on something. <laughs> uh, and uh, like Blair Reynolds quit the game. He, he literally, he got so freaked out. I think it was the salesman walking by the door in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. He was the guy who turned around and there's a, there's a scene where a, a, a character in spats and just walks in a room that he couldn't be walking in. And he ran in there and the guy was gone. He was like, Fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> and it just left the table. And they were all like, what? Um, um I should mention one uh spoiler alert for uh obviously all of this content. <laughs> uh yeah. Uh we're we're gonna go a lot in uh, deep into that. So Sure. Um, I mean maybe if you find that well, through line of impossible landscapes on yeah. the Christmas lights nightmare tangle flowchart <laughs> of it. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, hold on, as a man hold on. who appreciates a flowchart, I love how nauseating that thing is to visually look at. Uh, uh, cool. And yet it so accurately describes the game. And uh, Shane Ivey, uh, also of our stream, uh, has uh, showed up um, to uh, help elucidate the uh, behind the scenes for Impossible Landscapes. Um Shane, did you have you? I assume you've played uh, or run Night Floors yourself. Um, no, 
No, really? I, I never have. Okay. No, I, it's all completely platonic for me. I just <laughs> sort of go, went through the manuscript, you know, the 50 billion times it took to go through that manuscript mm -hmm. and drew upon all my experience nice. in imagining what okay. would this be like? If I were a pain in the ass GM who refused <laughs> to read carefully <laughs> and <laughs> indulge my imagination, and how would I optimize? How can we optimize it for that guy? <laughs> that's, that's the job. That's, that's the like job. he really he, he really job. lived up to that role. I have to say, he was yeah. like it was almost like he yeah. was that GM. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was incredible. You know, that's that's what it takes. We don't these awards don't win themselves. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, obviously night floors became, uh, you know, was written into countdown. Um, yes. and, uh, then there was it. So th th this, this idea of the, the, the Carcosa mythos was sort of an idea in Delta green, but like, it really wasn't, as far as I could tell, you really didn't do much with it or nothing was really done with these ideas until impossible landscapes. So there, there was a long sort of gestation period. Between, yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, there was a time when John Tynes and myself had discussed making a role-playing game that mm -hmm. was nothing but the King Yellow. Um, and that, that started and stopped and started and stopped. And John wrote, you know, a bunch of stuff that never, you know, never really congealed into a final gaming product. Mm -hmm. And then he started writing stories based in it, which got me even more excited about it. Cause I love those fucking stories. Um, and invented, you know, a lot of the core mythos concepts for the King Yellow there, like the marionettes and the broad album. And, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, eventually I just said, fuck it, John, you're not going to write this. I'm going to just go play with your toys. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you go sit over there. I'm going to write this. And and he went, oh, fine. You know, no, he was actually pretty cool with it. Um, uh, so, yeah, it, it sat around for a long time, mostly because occasionally there would be talk of, let's get the band back together and maybe write this together. And, mm -hmm. and that went on until about 2001, 2002, maybe. And then I got into doing other stupid stuff, video games. So. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was sort of, of course, reborn with the Delta Green Kickstarter. Because yeah. that was uh, back in 2015, I believe. Uh, yep. That was launched in one of the stretch goals for that. So um, and it's a tiny little book tiny little book uh and uh i did well i went back through the kickstarter updates for the delta green role playing which is of course still being updated because there's still a couple more stretch goals yeah we got coming out. um but uh it, it appears you started work on impossible landscapes in earnest and around mid 2017 that sounds uh, about right yeah um according to the kickstarter updates so um yeah let's let, let's talk about that the the, the sure. sitting down to actually write this because originally it wasn't uh, I think it wasn't going to be this big of a book. Shane, was that sort of like the idea was to make it like, it, I thought it was originally going to be like 128 pages or something like that. Not, you know, it's 370 that it is now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I did a lot of really careful math to budget things out, you know, so that uh, we could uh, bill enough money to Kickstarter to the backers, you know, mm -hmm. to pay for, the amount of time the art was going to take and the writing was going to take and the editing, the page design, the printing, the shipping, the delivery, all of that based on a book of about 192 pages. I think we were oh, 192, objective, yeah, yeah. maybe something like that, you know? Hmm. So um, luckily doubling all that didn't have any real impact on us. <laughs> and so our goal from now on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we can't live by the whole, like, we will serve no wine before it's time and then just, you know, hand over, like, Welch's grape juice at the end. It's got to be... I mean, honestly, we probably could get away with that two or three books if we really if, if we really needed to, you know? Yeah. heard it here first, gonna folks. Say, yeah. there's gonna Because I guarantee you there's going to be a few guys that are like, you know, geez, this is, they're really dropping the ball here. But then there's going to be 50 who are like, fuck you. Don't agree. These guys work hard as hell. <laughs> that's that's the best thing ever. That's true. But you only get to spend that coin once, Shane. I, that's I'm what not I'm saying. I'm, yeah. I'm, saying I'm not, not going to do that. Yet. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe next year, like later this year, if my move goes really poorly, you know, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. 
That's a I great promotional that strategy, that. Shane. Yeah. Delta yeah. Green. Yeah. Maybe this is the one. <laughs> you never You'll know have to read to find out. Yeah. <laughs> Did they um, give up this time? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the honest truth about Impossible Landscapes is, uh, I, I, I wrote. Uh, I took Night Floors, which was about 15 pages or 16 pages. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, completely blew it open and then rewrote it, and it was like 60 pages or something when I was mm-hmm. done with it. Um, as the core backdrop, because for me, it is the, def- you know, it is my definitive moment in, in the introduction to the concepts of Carcosa, the King mm-hmm. Yellow, how it works. It just seems stupid to come up with something new when I had that kind of perfect delivery setup, mm-hmm. which had a nice open end that kind of was like, find Abigail right. And that fit John's map of the road to Holly really well, which was someone goes missing and you have to kind of track and find them. So, um, but the, the honest truth is I wrote it and I wrote it and I wrote it and I ran it and I ran it and I ran it and I kept writing it and writing and writing it, uh, until I was done. Um, there really was no mystical moment of rev- revelation there. I just kind of gave it to people to read and run and they come back with notes and complaints and I just kept refining it. Mm-hmm. uh until it felt right to me um and then shane and um a friend of mine named stephen buck uh crawled through the book 33 times and we're here today we, <laughs> and me and shane were, were arguing about problems with the book this morning to give you an idea of how 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 much work has gone into it you've always been in carcosa you've always been printing the book yeah <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Uh, Tomorrow yeah. it'll wake up and it'll be 2017. You're writing a <laughs> Kickstarter entry. That's, that's, that's kind of what it's out. like. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, there are a lot of really interesting. Uh, uh, I mean, it's it's so go so go uh, gone above and beyond uh, night floors uh, in terms of um, obviously there's uh, the the main structure of it. Of course, is uh, four scenarios instead of one. Um, and, but that spans decades, but you also have, uh, like interesting things like new game mechanics, like the corruption mechanics. Um, so like corruption is obviously a very, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oh, you already did did all that. Uh, and I'll, I'll put that in the show notes, obviously, uh, as (laughs) well. Um, yeah. Corruption. Um, uh, it it became clear after the third or fourth play test that sanity wasn't just, wasn't going to cut it. Okay. Um, there, there was a methodology and that I kind of you'd see in play, mm-hmm. which could be measured as uh, I, the agents, want to know what that is versus get it the fuck away from me, and I <laughs> needed to measure that. Okay. Um, so that's the corruption mechanic, which is an exceedingly simple mechanic. It's an agent has a secret score of one between one and ten that indicates zero or one. Mm-hmm not really that enshrined in the King Yellow Mythos 10. Holy fuck, the king is holding a seat out for you at the table when you show up in Carcosa. Mm -hmm. Um, And I needed to be able to measure that. And the way uh, the mechanic works is very simple. If an agent or uh, a character at the table is super engaged in trying to track down every lead, trying to translate the old book, and trying to understand the the methodology of the King Yellow, their corruption increases, Mm -hmm. which allows them access to new monsters and locations that others may not see. Um, and if they pull away, if they try and destroy it, if they try and avoid it, it, it reduces, which makes them less of a target, does a couple other things. But mm-hmm. high level, it's just a, a way of measuring who in the campaign is really digging their hole to, to <laughs> die in. Uh, and most the good news is most of the time, there's two or three characters at every table who are like, fuck yeah, sign me up for the hole. <laughs> yep. uh, that was definitely my character. I went yeah. all in for the hole. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it, it's a really good, it, uh, I, I really do like it. Um, is it, did, did that, um, game mechanic have to change a lot over playtesting or was it pretty much, uh, as it was in the initial writing? It became simpler. Okay. I think, uh, like initially it was a little bit more fiddly and mm-hmm. then Shane gave me some feedback that was really well suited to what I was hoping to achieve. And mm-hmm. I realized Shane's suggestion, if I just cut this whole thing out. You know, it was another paragraph saying, you do this or you can do this. You don't even need that. You just throw it aside and say, 
if the agent does this, then this. If he doesn't do this, then this. Or she. Um, mm-hmm. And it just seemed to work. So, yeah, it's sim- it simplified. But it, it was always pretty simple. Okay. I mean, I, I, I also appreciate the fact that you put a cap of, like, only, like, up to three corruption per, per game session. Because, like, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was another Shane. It, me and Shane argued about kind of how to handle gaining and loss and mm-hmm. the interaction of players who can kind of drag others to see carcosa because they're affected corruption wise Mm -hmm. and that that went back and forth a bit but if anything it it literally shrunk in in i believe and that that felt good getting it simpler and simpler Mm -hmm. yeah um i've certainly seen um a lot of role-playing games or uh scenarios that have really cool mechanics but they they at a certain point they get a little too complex to uh, manage especially in a longer campaign because this is yeah um like judging from your estimate of saying each game, each adventure takes between two and five sessions to yeah. resolve it. That's like eight to 20 sessions. So that, yeah, it, that, it, it can yeah. be really big. Yeah. yeah. I've run it. I've run it eight, eight, eight or nine times, but eight, eight and a half, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of the sessions go monstrously long. We mm-hmm. had huge asides in other worlds and crazy shit in the Dorchester house where they're like, they cut a deal with Mr. Wild and made some great roles. And there were suddenly they're in, you know, 1921 New York with suicide chambers and being pursued by, you know, the police wearing white masks and they have no idea what to do, but it, it was a great aside. It was like, mm-hmm. uh, so when you guys went to the Dorchester house, you remember what it was like. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, they escaped there and wanted to go back. That's how bad the aside was they're like fuck it we're going back to the dorchester house um, so. yeah um so yeah caleb what, what are some of your you've actually you know read the uh book several times now probably by through the playtesting draft and you've playtested it quite a bit um what are some of the highlights of this uh campaign for you um i very much liked the uh the visceral nature of delta green's reaction to an enhanced corruption score. Mm-hmm. Um, I found, I found uh, when I play tested it, uh, one of my favorite parts is like, I just thought I was being a good agent. And then another agent walked up on me in a corridor and tried to kill me with an Uzi. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, yeah, you read it. You have to die. <laughs> uh, and uh, I thought that was great. And then I read how it's done in the book Mm-hmm. And it's a million times worse. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, uh, yeah, again, spoilers, but nightmare doll children balleting through an empty uh, mall oh. fountain as your face is exploding with marble shrapnel from guys trying to so kill the, you. The balcony. I, I want to interrupt, but the Golden Boy ghosts mm-hmm. is a real, like, a, we had a mall with the TSS and everything in New York that shut down next to a, like a, a landfill basically. And the rumor mm-hmm. was there was a, there was a ghost in there and people would break in to go see this thing. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to write this in of this, <laughs> you know, this security guard chase. And the story was a security guard saw this thing and chased it every night. And then he killed himself. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to write this up as a Delta green thing. And it worked. It felt really good to me. It felt creepy. And then nice. you see them fucking dancing during the gun battle and that, that, that I, I that's happened uh four maybe four times out of the play test and mm-hmm. every time people are like what why is this <laughs> happening you it, know it's, like, it's yeah it's yeah. like way of the gun meets faust yeah. uh, at the same time <laughs> it's very it's very cool uh mm-hmm. i very much like that i i found myself disappointed i got attacked in a stairwell of a yeah a ramada inn instead yeah. of uh I hadn't had time to put it all together, you know, Mm. (laughs) but thank you. Thank you for being the, the original sacrificial lambs. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I've, uh, those actual, those uh, sessions, at least some of those play tests were recorded and are on your uh, Patreon. So we'll try to have the links to um, that in the show notes. Um, So, uh, but Shane, yeah. um, Obviously as the other person who has read this book uh, uh, more times than they care to count, uh, what what are some of the highlights of uh, impossible landscapes for you? I don't know. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Thanks Shane. I'll remember this. (laughs) 
Oh boy. So uh, the uh, you know I, I think I think my favorite my favorite bits of it are um, the 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 second. So the book has this weird structure, you know, where the where the the opening scenario mm-hmm. um, is potentially kind of sprawling, just mm-hmm. but just based on how much information the agents um, try to get out of it and how mm-hmm. much exploring they do. Uh, then there's the second of the four, which is um, essentially a full length campaign in its own right, you know, mm-hmm. unless the players are really super disciplined and go out of their way to not interact with any of the fun stuff, then, um, <laughs> you know, it can really, really sprawl out and speed run impossible um, landscape. So yeah. Good luck. Right. So, and, uh, uh, and so I think that, I think the, the, all the different permutations of that adventure, um, or some of my favorite mm-hmm. bits because it has this kind of, um, echoing, uh, event structure mm-hmm. going on where you start off the age of the, the players start off investigating in a kind of traditional normal way. And they mm-hmm. have to investigate this insane asylum and they discover that there's people that everybody that's involved with it, you know, are variously creepy and horrible and insane. And, um, but then, you know, eventually they, uh, um, one way or another, they wind up, going to it at night and getting trapped and it's like a whole other scenario begins. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so all of the, all of the material that all, all of the material there, I really, really enjoyed um, reading and, um, and, uh, and working with mm-hmm. and, um, and the, 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 you know, the, the crazy demons um, as much shit as I've given Dennis and will continue to give Dennis over, writing uh i think 12 pages of write-ups for demons that the players will probably encounter one or two of them um were 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 really well realized and fun so i'm probably going to steal a bunch of those and repurpose them for other material um later yeah uh i definitely agree with being like this book is such a pleasure to read. Um, and I, there's already material that I want to steal for other games or use as inspirations for other, um, like the, um, the, uh, Chateau, uh, of doors, you know, yeah. uh, mentioned yeah. in the, the early history, uh, mm-hmm. of the, uh, King and yellow, um, that that's like, Oh, I could, I could, re- I could make that scenario. That's pretty yeah. easy to do. Um, so, and, that, and that's the kind of thing that could easily yeah. happen in a volume of secret faces, you know, that kind of sprawling second adventure I was talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Because the whole, the, you know, the, 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 the agents could easily interact with um, the character who was instrumental in all that shit happening. Right. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. you've got, if you wanted to, if you as the handler wanted to explore that, then there's a door into it, you know, yeah. you can, mm-hmm. you can have them step through that door. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, yeah, there's, there's, and, and we did that. We, um, there's a, there's another, there's a booklet that I'm going to, we're going to be putting out, um, soon called static protocol that gathers up that big giant history chapter at the beginning of the book and mm-hmm. kind of repackages it thematically so that it can be, so that you can, um, so that you can, uh, search for elements and items Mm-hmm. by subject matter, you know? So if you want to oh, see okay, yeah. where all in the history is the Chateau de Port, mm-hmm. um, Chateau de Port talked about, mm-hmm. you look up the Chateau de Port entry and it gives you all of those entries in one place. So, um, so, uh, so yeah, sort of so that's another course. thing that's coming out soon that'll, that I hope is going to, is going to be an extra, extra, uh, allow for some extra layers. Of yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a concordance. Uh, very useful. Because, um, yeah, there's there's so much material. Um, and I yeah. think, yeah. Uh, one of the other, of course, pleasures, aside from just the content uh, or the, the writing, is the, the, the art and the graphic design of it. Because oh, this yeah. is probably the most intricate, uh, one of the most intricate uh, RPG products I've ever seen. Uh, and certainly, uh, and I think the most intricate Delta Green product I've, I've uh, seen um because the 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 graphic design is just 
um, uh, quite uh, inspired in a lot of ways, you know, handwritten <laughs> notes, uh, yeah. excerpts, uh, all kinds of things that could be used as handouts, uh, yeah. as props. Um, so, uh, Dennis, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, yeah. We, um, uh, so the art, I, I drew most of the art. We have some stuff in there uh, from Kirk Komoda, who's an incredibly talented artist. He did the King Yellow poster and a, a tarot card. Um, mm-hmm. But our graphic designer, uh, Jen, is just, just completely floored both me and Shane. I, I won't speak for Shane, but from moment one, she just was channeling this book. Like, can you make this look weirder? Was never a request. It was always <laughs> weird from the get-go. Uh, and then when I told her on top of that, like, guess what? We're going to have an argument between two madmen in handwritten text all over the book. She didn't go, oh, no. She went, that's awesome. Let's do this. And <laughs> just kind of jumped on it. Um, so, and, and indeed, we do. Throughout the entire book, you'll read the creator of classical demonology, mm-hmm. who writes in blue, I believe, and uh, a, a, a hollowed-out shell of a Delta Green agent who's controlled by the King Yellow, who writes in red ink <laughs> throughout the book, noting things and weird um, uh, synchronicities and interrelationships. Mm-hmm. And even the, the blue guy basically is saying is commanding the red guy. So he'll write something and then the red guy will respond as if it's his idea. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's quite funny and fun. And we buried hundreds of spelling changes, purposeful spelling changes, mm-hmm. uh, shifts in words throughout the entire book. So keep your eye out. Um, nobody has found at least three big things hidden in the book. Um, mm. And um, I hope they will find them because it, it was all given very careful consideration by everybody. The dates, the times, the interrelations of characters, who turns up where are is all a very complex dance that was built to be that way. Um, and uh, Shane and I spent a ton of time on it. And then Jen, our graphic designer, spent even more time trying to make it all look good. And she did a great job. Yeah. Um, yeah. That must've taken a lot of back and forth. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shane, do yes. you think you're going to be uh, holding other future Delta green products at this standard, or is this going to be like the, uh, <laughs> uh, the high water mark of graphic design? <laughs> Cause I can't, I'm, this was uh, certainly looked very labor intense. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, Dennis and I have, have talked a good bit about, um, after this project, kind of going back to the uh, little back book traveler standard of graphic design, <laughs> no art, where you kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't sorry, bother sorry, with Caleb. illustrations. Yeah. You just have, you know, Great. Uh, I'm glad. Text. Yeah, I'm glad I get to be on one, like accordion folded printer paper because you guys, yeah, you know, yeah. one typeface yeah. it goes. But you vary the size of it, and some of it can be bold. <laughs> <laughs> some of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, just get back with me more budget. Yeah, old <laughs> words are. Yeah, um, um, but yeah, I will say at a, at a high level, um, we really always want to push the books forward. We never yeah. want to find a plateau and just sit on it. Um, okay, it's, it doesn't feel safe to me. So, God's teeth will be even prettier if I can Ooh. help it. Um, and that's kind of every book. We we just go to the next book going and all the margins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Keep you never at. know. You yeah. never, you'll never know. Yeah. It could, it's printed in human blood. Who's blood? <laughs> you'll never know. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I really, we feel, I, I feel pretty strongly about that. I always want to make the best book I can. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, to a large degree, like it feels like we keep hopefully swinging as, as hard as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, whether or not we hit, <laughs> it's another it's another thing, but like the, the, you know, the last one that we did that I really liked was the, uh, the King and Yellow Samurai, uh, book that, that we did. Um, oh, the, uh, uh, illustrated, the annotated, the annotated, annotated, annotated King and Yellow. Yeah. I just thought that that came out great and really loved mm-hmm. that. And I want to just keep pushing it like that. So, okay. yeah. Um, and, 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 uh, let anybody take the wrong message out of my dig at traveler. Um, I love traveler and Mark <laughs> Miller is a complete minch, by the way, if anybody yes. ever has any reason to interact with him 
a couple of years ago on like I had I was dealing with one of the Delta Green books in fact and the Delta Green um, files that I got from uh, John Tynes were still like Quark Express files <laughs> from a version of Quark <laughs> Express that hasn't existed in 15 years yeah. and um, and I was trying my hardest to open them up and figure out how to extract the text in some way that was going to be remotely legible and just banging my head against the wall. And finally I put a message out on just, I put a post on Facebook. It wasn't a message, private message or anything uh, asking, does anybody happen to have some archaic version of fucking Quark Express and Mark Miller of all people, you know, we're not <laughs> friends particularly. I mean, I've never met him in person, but he wrote back and said, Hey man, what do you need? And he like within uh -huh. a couple of days, he sent, I sent in those files and I got countdown and Delta green squared away for InDesign. So, yeah. Mark, yeah. Mark gets so a, Mark gets Miller a is, yeah. is a, is a, is a, is a solid dude. Well, tra <laughs> traveler, traveler came out Love my in traveler. January, 1977. So right. getting getting yeah. a book to press in January 1977. <laughs> right. Oh, if you if you it was compare, basically if written you on vellum. Yeah. 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 If you were like if that's the thing is if you compare the uh, the graphic design standards of 1977 mm -hmm. Traveler and 1977 Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. I mean, there's no comparison. You know, <laughs> yeah. Traveler, Traveler work of visual <laughs> art. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Anyway, right. Shane was joking about Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone, Mark. <laughs> um, Leave your goons off. <laughs> so, I um, mean, obviously, Caleb probably. Well, I assume, uh, obviously, when you were reading this, you were probably at least thinking um, how you would approaching this if you were going to run it. Now, now, I want to run it for RPPR uh, later. This oh, year. I never thought I would be able to run it because I knew you would be running it for RPPR. Nice. <laughs> I didn't want you to stab me in the neck, so I didn't <laughs> even consider. Wow, it, so. yeah. the dark relationship. Yeah. I mean, I well, Peyton. I know him. And yeah. Hold on, what you got? No, no, this no, no, no. this hole was need... made for Peyton. This, yeah. this, let, yeah. Let me let me tell you what you guys need to do, and that <laughs> is competing impossible landscape no. campaign. No. Like, two impossible two landscapes. Vote, uh, which yeah. session they like two better? Impossible they like the Rob session yeah. better or the Caleb session better? No. <laughs> this, this way lies man. Harsh. Yeah. Um, when I read it, I was really intrigued by the, the things that didn't kill us. Like, um, I was alarmed at how visceral it got sometimes. Because, like, mm -hmm. while I love the game, um, and I do love a horror game based off poems... Uh, which is basically what Impossible Landscape is. Uh, I do, I do sometimes fear those games will get too abstract at times to mm -hmm. remain uh, terrifying. But then there's that nurse we didn't follow home, who if we had yes. followed home, made her entire apartment into napalm. And oh yeah, you get to burn in it. Like yeah, just yes, like yes. just when you think it's like all poems and dances, Nurse Saminga is just like, actually, I've <laughs> killed my husband, and this house is made of paraffin. Enjoy. <laughs> Well, like even uh, better, even better. It's made of paraffin that she borrowed from her neighbor in 1995. <laughs> That's my favorite part. They they literally found in two of the sessions they found this saying leave for Esther, and they were like in 95. And then they get later, and one of the guys was like, "This can't be the stuff from the basement in the night." Oh fuck! Uh, and, um, then, but, and then, but, and then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I love that. I love that she hugs you and she's crying. She's so happy. That's my favorite part of that. <laughs> is that the king's coming? Get, get, yeah, and then she gives you a big here. hug. Yeah. yeah. I, um, so good. That yeah. And fun. we didn't even touch that. So like, no, that's been you, you my favorite that part. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's been my favorite part of reading it. It's just like, <laughs> oh, well, we, we didn't die that way. But then I remember <laughs> like we were at the Dorchester house and somebody else's body. And yeah. I was like screaming at Faye to cut open my thigh so I could put <laughs> a, film, a film canister of notes in there for us to read in the future. Yes. And yes. that's like not in the book. That's just like a no. crazy thing I came up with because I was so desperate to no, get out no, of this. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, and that that kind of talks to <laughs> the hardest, the hardest part for me in Impossible Landscapes was the surreal horror intro, how to get the the handler in the right mindset how to how to keep the players in the right mindset and how to get that pace of building 
surreality up to this point and then it drops off and you have a big moment and then it goes back to like mm-hmm. i've got to go get my car tags renewed <laughs> <laughs> like and when you do it just right they're mm-hmm. like you're holding your kid's hand you the guidance counselor's been talking for 25 minutes <laughs> You're thinking about the, the screaming white thing that ran up the hallway chasing you while on fire. Uh, and then you take him home and you forget to unlock the door. You drive off. Your child is out in the rain for three hours. You know, and when you get a nice measure of that, they, they just the players get really freaked out. And then they mm-hmm. start they start turning on each other. And that's that's when it gets really fun when they're like, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, the sat phone is my favorite part. Oh, mm-hmm. God. So, yeah um so well <laughs> uh do you have any uh, uh advice for a new keeper uh, uh handler uh wanting to yeah run this yeah yeah i you know the high level advice is as always um read the book mm-hmm. uh front to back realize it's it's a <laughs> it's a grab bag of horrors it is basically mm-hmm. built for you to be able to pluck stuff out and place them anywhere along a chain you really want. Mm -hmm. And once you realize that the entire message is uh, the world is an illusion, the play is real, everything is the shell surrounding it that people dance through and have no idea. Once you realize that's the truth of this world, you can make literally anything happen if you take the right amount of time and set up. So Whenever you're, you think you're at an impasse, you think you're at a, a structural point in a game where you can't explain your way out, realize that those doors and walls that you have placed up of common conception don't exist in impossible mm-hmm. landscapes. You can kick them down. They're made of cardboard. You can go to the next room, grab a chainsaw, and just start cutting them all up any way you want. Um, and a lot of handlers don't uh, – it, it's hard for them to take that leap. But if you mm-hmm. do – uh, and you're consistent in your descriptions going backwards. That's all you really need to be is, didn't you tell me that this happened? Yes, it happened, but sorry, it wasn't real. <laughs> um, you know, and get that, you, and you can use that, use that to give yourself permission to, um, not be like psychotically attentive to detail if you don't want yeah. to be mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Um, because, Okay, so the agents, you know, the agents discovered something you said contradicts something you said five sessions ago, and it was super important. Um, that's okay. Just right. the, the the best thing you can do is just embrace that, and then invent some way to make it extra weird so that they feel bad for having pointed it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I I just invented a solution for that, which is you come home and there are new pages of the play which have that conversation in three different versions. Uh, where one you're angry, one you're sad, one you're talking about your wife, uh, and you know this was delivered to your door via courier after you had that conversation. It's like it's a rewrite, basically. You have to go back and do it again. Mail uh, arriving at your house. It is a surreal horror. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the most important thing is uh, this is a moving, living, breathing thing. It has to be. It's mm-hmm. it's not a linear experience. And in fact, can go in crazy directions and should. Um, so it's, it, it really becomes kind of a, a grab bag of horror. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of what I wanted. So, um, so in preparation for this episode, I asked uh, RPPR listeners uh, if they had any questions for you. Cool. And actually, several of them were sort of about this. Um, what was... Uh, 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 Jacob Derby says, I've been running it on and off for two years now. What's the design intention between having the first and last scenarios of the campaign be fairly on rails, but having the exu- uh, mechanical connections between different times and places. And then mm-hmm. also Ward uh, John Donovan. Uh, it feels like certain sections were a bit too railroaded without spoilers. Mm-hmm. I would say leaving the Dorchester and finding the, the Brodelbin uh, in particular, I can understand the lack of agency is probably meant to propel a feeling of fate and helplessness. Were the uh, different otherworldly hints, clues, and strange happenings a way of giving the illusion of a variety of paths to take? So I guess, yeah. Um, two, yeah. two, yeah, two of pretty much the same question. So the high level is um, the campaign is based on a uh, on the road to Holly design, which is kind of mm-hmm. these fixed waypoints occur, mm-hmm. and in between those waypoints. It's crazy town. You can do anything you want. It's literally normal investing, you know. Um, so that was the original design intention was we have to get you 
to Carcosa. Mm -hmm. You have to meet the king, and that's the only way to escape. Um, so that was the high-level design intention. Um, now, having said that, uh, the entire concept behind the King Yellow is it is a faded play wherein people play roles and are fixed in their actions to a certain degree. So, yes, I, I do want that feeling to occur to players. I want them to think, fuck, I am locked into this thing now. I have to go through these motions to buy my freedom. Um, now, railroad, I, I don't know. Um that's that's a tough one. Uh, yeah. You know, every with the, game. With the, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh uh, well, I, I, if you wanted to gather your thoughts, I was just going to say with the the uh, the chase to the Brabalban is a transition point, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I would say that ought to be fairly brief, right? That ought to be an hour of frenetic yeah. adrenaline. Right. As and, and so that you're keeping the, the the players too on their toes for them to think about, well, this is a cheat. I wanted to be able to turn left instead of, you know, what mm -hmm. if I turn? What if I want to want to have a conversation with? the? With yeah. The yeah. Yeah. I mean, my my high level takeaway is horror is about um, periods of lack of control. Mm -hmm. That's that's the entirety of the experience, whether you want it to be or not. Uh, it's, that's I want this horrific. to happen. Yeah. I want this to happen. No, nope, this is happening. That's, <laughs> that's the core explanation of, of what's occurring in all these games and all these. Now, having said that, um, it is a linear experience for the handler or it can be a linear experience for the handler, but it should never appear that way for a player. Yeah. Um, and there's a large section of the book devoted on how to kind of combat that. Um, so, so I guess that's my high level is, when you're trying to work out a, a feeling that you can carry across to a player through a 300 some odd page book, um, it's up to the handler to make it live or die on the table. Um, and, you know, you'll notice you guys broke that linear experience. You, you, you fucked off from 1995. You went through doors that you shouldn't have gone through. And I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. So I just let you run with it and you looped back around and you were mm -hmm. like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, that's that's the core feeling you should have for most of the scenarios. And at the end, you should be, this is the answer. I wish I hadn't found this answer. I want to go home. That should, <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I can understand the criticisms of stuff like that. I, mm -hmm. I, I understand their point of view. Yeah. Um, I mean, any, any, any role-playing game, an awful lot of the job of the GM is to trick the players into forgetting that you're cheating the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, one person uh, I did mention, a viewer listener did mention, they were running uh, Impossible Landscapes and Passions de la Passions, which is a uh, RPG meant to sim simulate uh, telenovelas uh, for Mexican <laughs> television. <laughs> awesome yeah so um that, that's some twin peak shit right there yeah <laughs> right play a Delta yeah. green campaign and then yeah. transition to a oh, i like that campaign. idea that's yeah that's fucking awesome great. uh so uh but another question um is uh friedrich asked uh did you have to uh, kill any darlings uh did where oh, yeah. was it yeah what what uh, can you give us any hints about some of the cut material uh yeah there was an entire scenario in there um, that, that just didn't survive the gestation period uh, mm -hmm. in between uh, Broad Albin and uh, like a map made of skin, which was more about the demons and kind of becoming embroiled in the world of the King Yellow on the earth. Mm -hmm. So the idea that there's a, there was a massive underground of people putting on these plays mm -hmm. and trying to learn all the words to the play. And, and that kind of got resurrected in the, in the timeline you know, if you read the timeline, it's it becomes mm -hmm. kind of inherent there that there's these people throughout history trying to gather the entirety of the King Yellow so they can enact it and see oh, something yeah. dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, so there was supposed to be a whole scenario about that. And that just didn't fit. It just mm -hmm. seemed like too much of an aside for the kind of um, the amount of velocity I wanted mm -hmm. coming out of the Dorchester house. I wanted it to be a, a, a terrifying it's shoot where you're being hit over mm -hmm. and over again and moving forward. Mm -hmm. 
one uh another thing is uh are there do you have any favorite uh yellow slime slash haster kind of scenarios outside of your own work uh uh john john times ha- john times ran a bunch of what went into the road to holly mm-hmm. uh and they were those scenarios were awesome i had so much fun in those scenarios they were so different and so weird and mm-hmm. very noirish and strange and there's a uh, he wrote it up but there was a sequence where we were looking for a guy who's missing i forget the exact circumstances we went to a garden party with one of the main suspects and uh he picked the guy up the guy was this little little it's on the table screaming like this big and he picked him up and ate him in front of us across the room and all the agents were like what the fuck just happened like <laughs> and then he, he came over and like handed out drinks and we were like we we saw you and he was like oh yeah <laughs> so yeah i don't remember the name of the scenario but it was it was david lynch level <laughs> holy fuck we gotta get out of this um it was wonderful yeah uh, but that was that actually published somewhere? I could I could probably find it if it was. But. I don't think so. Okay. I, 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 John that, would just run like a published one. Yeah, yeah. John would just run scenarios for us, um, and that was one of them. And mm. it was it was great. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, maybe we can see some of the cut material from Impossible Landscapes uh, published at some point. Sure. Yeah. Um, I've got piles of it. Caleb, do you think any of uh, uh, you're going to be doing any uh, surreal horror for Dead Channels? Uh yeah, uh, I'm I'm thinking about bringing the traveler back. I think that is um pretty surreal in its I've face. I've got to hook up with Mark Miller if you need to. If you want to have him <laughs> talk about uh, it. Yeah, Just one yeah. out. Oh, uh, the the traveler from Shadow Plays and Puppet Shows. Uh no, I was gonna bring the traveler back from uh the RPPR um somewhere lane. So oh that uh, traveler okay yeah, yeah. that one seemed kind of surreal. So yeah. mm-hmm. I had plans for that. Um, I did drugs on a mini golf course one time, so there's probably a scenario <laughs> in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, just yeah i got a lot of stuff knocking around for dead channels but uh some of it will be surreal yeah yeah uh that's good to hear um because yeah it it is a, a lot of fun um to uh yeah make the players yeah just like what the fuck is going on uh well 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 i think that's a key point though Dennis is not getting too abstract with it um yeah that, that's sort of the the counterbalance um yep. so uh let's see were there anything else nope um so yeah, it, Impossible Landscapes is out now. Uh, it's it's a very cool book. It's worth getting just to read, uh, even if you don't plan to run it. Uh, I, I mean, certainly Night Floors is available to run as a one shot. Uh, mm-hmm. It's pretty easily uh, adaptable for that. Um, Shane, any final thoughts on uh, uh, Impossible Landscapes uh, uh, topics that we haven't mentioned yet? Too? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I you know, you've, you've covered the main things. I think with the, for the, for the, for the, for the GM's purposes, um, just remember that you're there to make it feel, uh, dreamy, mm-hmm. you know, um, a lot of, uh, and a lot of Delta, a lot of Delta green scenarios, um, don't really chase that angle because mm-hmm. they're kind of going at going, approaching horror from a different Mm. direction Mm -hmm. and this is an opportunity to uh this is an opportunity to kind of explore what happens when it's not just your mind that's breaking down but the world itself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's a wonderful quote um which is uh most people uh, a lot of people have trouble imagining um uh on an abstract level and the test goes something like imagine a gray train Imagine, um, uh, imagine a train, imagine a gray train, imagine you are a gray train. And most people respond with, but I'm not a gray train. Like, that's like a good quarter of people on the planet. Uh, you, you need to be the gray train here. You, you need to step outside your, your comfort zone and uh, make impossible landscapes your own. Um, it is not a blueprint. It is a series of uh, Lego blocks made of human horror that you can pop together in any shape you like. Um, and that's kind of, well, that was kind of the goal 
was was to make um, something with so many little horrible bits that all interrelate, independent of time and space, that you could put them in nearly any configuration and they would make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and and even better if you if you have a chance to make your players like you know use force or guilt or whatever, make your players uh, create and maintain a painstakingly detailed murder board. <laughs> string and cork and shit like that. Oh yeah, red th- and, red string. Uh, and yeah. we're all separated now, so it's actually even better. You make each of them do their own murder board. Oh sure. Right? <laughs> so that then they can have to compare. Wait, that's not on mine. Yeah. Did that uh, happen? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone sets up a separate Pinterest uh, board. Yeah. <laughs> this mood board, board just sure. screaming. I mean, yeah. technical cork and string is way better, but mm-hmm. if you've got a you know, do what you got to do. Just give them XP for it. It won't matter. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. It's not going to help you. Yeah, yeah. Just the right. biggest surface area covered. You get, yes, you get a billion DXP. <laughs> You're the bell of the ball. Go you conquer, conquer, conquer. 99 <laughs> machine gun. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, You're uh, a second level now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thanks for listening. Um, Caleb, uh, where can people find you on the social medias? Uh, I am Hebanon G Cal on Twitter. Um, my Patreon is the Mix Six, also Delta Green Dead Channels, and also Hebanon Games Open Design. So mm-hmm. I'm all uh, over the place. And Shane, where can people find you on the social medias? Uh, so Shane Ivy is my super imaginative handle everywhere mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, so if you look on uh, Twitter, I'm there. If you look on Patreon, I'm there. Uh, if you look on Discord, it's probably Shane Ivy number sign something 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 because of the weird ass way Discord is, <laughs> and uh, you know Facebook and who knows what else. <laughs> Old man shouts at cloud. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Um, are there any other new Arc Dream products coming out that you want to plug before we go? Oh, that I want to plug. Let's see. What do we have coming out that I want to plug? I'm, I'm going to wrap up uh, Dennis's uh, latest little razor blade of microfiction. Uh, the way it went down volume two is, is kind of been percolating for mm-hmm. a while. So I just need to um, uh, either start the design on that or, um, or get, uh, I might hand that off to Cindy. finish the cover. I finished the writing. Can't blame me. Yeah, I might play. <laughs> no, that, that's all. That's Shame. all in my hands. Yeah, and uh, it, you know we've got the we've got the Jack Ross start is all done, so that's on me too. I just need to uh, mm-hmm. finish my last revision, simplifying that, and um, and then uh, we have uh, Black Sites, which is a, a scenario collection mm-hmm. that's been people have been waiting on for a long time. Is uh, sh- well, it's it's at our UK warehouse, so that ought to be shipping out any day now internationally. And I think the U.S. delivery got held up in um, – there was this this massive traffic jam of cargo ships at the L.A. port the last month or so. Mm-hmm. And I think that – I think our, our U.S. delivery got held up there. So Quick, mute Caleb. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it'll – I won't uh, say anything. That's fine. It'll, 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 I'm it'll, sure it'll, it's it'll, fine. It'll arrive soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah I, I assume great. So. Uh, and um, and and what else? Hold on. No, you asked. You asked what? Yeah, yeah. what no, that's what we've fine. Got to pitch, so you're gonna have to live with it now. Oh, yeah. oh man. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. What else, Dennis? What else are we doing? Are we doing anything? Arc Ints. Uh, I'm almost done with Arc Ints. I have three more illustrations for Arc Ints, and then it's ready to go. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. We've got a, we've got like a dozen projects that are kind of really, really close. Um, cool. And then, and then, uh, of course, Impossible yeah. Landscapes, as we mentioned, is coming out in print in May, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yep. uh, uh, I play tested yeah, uh, one of the Arkent scenarios on uh, Dead Channels. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Granite Open, nice. you can hear that. So, mm-hmm. cool. cool. Um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Dennis, uh, any, how can people uh, ask you questions on social media? Oh, yeah. Uh, Twitter, I am drgonzo123. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an old address. I don't know why I have that. And on Patreon, uh, it's just slash Detwiller, mm-hmm. D-E-T-W-I-L-L-E-R. And um, if you join for a buck, you gain access to everything, including 300-page manuscripts, 
art, design, scenario layouts. There's a monstrous amount of material on the Patreon. And yeah. like like our, our friends Caleb and uh, Ross, it's it's a dollar tier. We don't fucking care. Just give us a buck and you can have everything. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> cool. Um, well, uh, thank you all for listening. This has been RPPR episode 183, uh, Imp- Impossible Landscapes and Dead Channels. And never forget, you are a great train. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>